today's video we're going to be having a look at the diamond select a nightmare before christmas this is behemoth and corpse boy The residents of Halloween Town are the monsters and creatures who make Halloween possible. A bunch of scary characters they love nothing more than to frighten people year after year. But when Jack Skellington has an idea to take over Christmas, Behemoth, Corpse Boy and their fellow citizens go along with this wild plan and do their best to recreate the holiday. These deluxe action figures of Behemoth and Corpse Boy from Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas feature multiple points of articulation and a piece of town's square diorama. Collect all six parts. The figures, by the way, were also sculpted by Dave Cortez. Let's go ahead and measure the figures. Behemoth, I'm actually gonna measure to the top of his ax handle, just because you can't remove it from his head. So from the bottom of his feet to the top right there of the ax handle, you're looking at eight inches exactly. How does that work out to be centimeters? Haha, <laughs> let me show you gents. 20.4 centimeters tall. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch that back over. Switch it back over to inches, there we go and measure the much smaller, there he is right there. Get right to the very top of his head. Stop it right there. Corpse Boy stands at a much smaller 3.6 inches. Centimeters, I know, I know. Centimeters, let me get to that. 9.3 centimeters tall is little tiny Corpse Boy. Here's all the accessories that come included with the figures. For starters, you get the bottom circular section of the town square. Now, if you imagine the uh, the bottom of the uh, the watering water fountain, the, the bottom circular bottom base of that uh, came included with zero. Unfortunately, I don't have all the pieces here readily available. Sort of let, dropped the ball, didn't I? Yeah, I dropped the ball. I don't have all the pieces available right now that I could put everything together. I think I have all the pieces still because I got all the Nightmare Before Christmas things at the figure-wise, I got them all at the uh, comic book store, so I should still have the pieces. Um, I, don't, I don't have some of the older waves, but at the very least, I think I've got all of Town Square, or at least the watering fountain. If I can find all those pieces, uh, rest assured, a follow-up video will commence. In the meantime, resuming with the rest of the accessories that come included with these two figures, you get yourself a very nice wrapped parcel. Wrapped if you like Halloween, as you can see, very much a Halloween color motif. And of course, the, the print on the paper is that of spiders. That's lovely. Some gray wrapping ribbon, making up the whole full length of the packaging. And then there's a bow on the top. Now you look at this, let me draw your attention to this. Does not it look like you can actually lift this lid up? I have tried prying it with my fingers, even though I don't have much in the way of fingernails. And uh, unfortunately, I've come to the realization that I don't think the top of the packaging is supposed to come off. Sort of disappointing. Um, as good as the sculpt is, I would have absolutely loved for the fact that you could have taken the lid off. And it does look like it's supposed to, doesn't it? Maybe I might push forward with the idea of still trying to remove it. But uh, it does look like there's a seam allowing you to take the lid off because one thing it would make then sense for is if you could remove the lid you'd then have a place to put the scary teddy which as it currently goes right now there is no place scary teddy has a long tail and ultimately it means there's no real place where you can put it if the tail could have been bendable or at the very least this could have been posable you could have brought the tail back and it not necessarily sit upright but uh, unfortunately, the, the current state that it's in, you can't really do anything with it. I guess unless you had one of the characters holding it. This also could have lended itself that even though the packaging is a little bit smaller, even if you took the lid off, you could have fit something, at least the part of the, the Teddy's tail in there, so that you would have had some place to store it. Um, despite for the fact that you can't store it anywhere, it's a really neat looking recreation of the Scary Teddy from the film. It's got 
all this nice little lines that of white that they've run through the primarily all black body. Same can be said also for the bottom tail portion here. It's got some great coloring as it did in the film. A big, big giant smile on the front there. You know, whenever I look at this, I always think of Shrek's department store. Um, the little turn, the little head that's turning in Batman Returns. Uh, right above the department store where Catwoman goes into, I always kind of rem this always kind of reminds me of that. I think it's just the just the look on the face, for example. So really nice side accompanying accessory, even though you really can't do all that much with it. I'm gonna put that right over there. Uh, before we actually look at the figures as well, I'll do a couple of scale comparisons. I'm trying to do a little bit more of that in the videos as well. There is pajama jack. Don't worry, I'll adjust the camera. And there's also zero. This makes up the current wave of figures that we've looked at so far. And uh, of course, every time new figures get released, of course, bet your bottom dollar, bet your bottom dollar, are you like from the 20s? I'm gonna have a look at them on this channel. So you guys can look forward to doing that. I say guys, guys and girls, of course. I usually just say guys, but guys, girls, owls, and uh, any anybody else that may be watching. So we'll go ahead and remove those because we've already had a look at those hopefully extensively enough. If I don't, if I'm not doing these extensively enough for you, everybody watching, do please let me know. I'll put zero right over there. And let's have a look at the figures from this set. Why don't we first have a look? I'm going to go with Behemoth. I know you probably were thinking I was going to go with Corpse Boy first, but I'm going to go with Behemoth because Behemoth is a nice example of hefty plastic being utilized here. It's a nice, actually, contrast to the lesser plastic that was utilized. Here I am, once again, bringing these figures back in to the lesser plastic that was utilized for both of these figures. Pajama Jack, by his tall yet still slender build here, really didn't use a whole lot of plastic. Of course, Zero, I mentioned in this in the review of Zero, how he comes across really more as an accessory than anything else because he doesn't really have a whole lot of plastic. Fast forward over the course of one video now to the video here of uh, Behemoth, and you can really see the amount of hefty plastic. It's like holding a, a rock in your hand, a very solid rock. It's a nice contrast to what we've gotten with these figures right here. And I'm glad that for every smaller, thinner character, Diamond Select usually always kind of hikes up the wave by incorporating a big bulky figure. And this is where we get Bohemoth here, a very large, chunky, hefty plastic. Looks awesome, and I love the head sculpt that they put on him. Sort of a lifeless, blank stare, as of course he's got a few stitches in his head, and it looks like he's got a bit of a headache as he's got this little axe wedged into his head. Now, if you're asking yourself, if you axe the question, can you remove the axe out of his head? Yes, I'm here all night. The answer is no, it's wedged in there. There's no way, there's no means. There's nothing happening, Jack, where you're gonna be able to get that out. I guess you could force it out, but why would you wanna do that? That makes no sense. Why be so cruel to a figure that's done nothing to you? Let that sink in there for a second. The sort of the pastel light shade of blue that they've used is quite nice, actually. In behind camera, in this $75,000 studio, not even close to being that. It actually looks like it glows, it pulsates, it lights the room up, but actually it isn't. It's just the way that the light is bouncing off of it. It does look like it's almost glowing, if you will. It's kind of like a purplish slight tint to the otherwise blue pastel nature of it. The overalls, the coveralls are, as you can see, kind of a crossed hatched effect, sort of looking almost as if it's uh, like a canvas or a burlap. You can see that they've been buttoned in place. One little bit of the pocket has unstitched itself uh, from the very top corner there and then that was draping down. Love that they've added some additional kind of dingy gray in there as well, just to kind of dirty them up so they don't look like they're brand new. Unlike, for example, for example, these ones here, it's kind of the coloring of pea soup. Or if somebody is really sick. I went with the route of describing it better with food than somebody being sick, but it kind of is kind of that pukey green. Okay, I'll just throw it out there. It kind of is like a pukey green that they've used for these gloves, which are much shinier, much more pristine than I would say maybe the rest of the coveralls happening right here. 
Um, it kind of looks like they've added a little bit of like gray and just sort of dry brushed it across there. Uh, actually, even like the blue gets a little bit of, of extra paint happening along the top shoulder. I don't know. I'm assuming that that would be intentional, that they've added a little bit on the top there as well. Very small feet, small bare feet here on Behemoth. Rest assured, gentlemen, ladies, and owls, that he does have posability, despite for the fact that looking at him, he doesn't really look like he would do a whole lot. Well, I guess to some extent, he really doesn't do a whole lot. For example, his head is on a ball joint. Moving it up, you can sort of see some additional shading that they've added right underneath the jawline. It's just a little bit of extra love that Diamond Sucked has put into their pieces. A beautiful, again, head sculpt. Get a little bit of the darker shading happening around the eye area as well. Sort of a wandering off stare. But we push forward with the articulation. His head hinges up and down. It also rotates, but it's a little cumbersome because of the nature of the big bulbous head that he has here. The shoulders hinge out. Not a whole lot, though. That's about it. That's about all you're really going to get. He doesn't have hand articulation, nor does he have glove posability. But I guess you could, in theory, in theory, rotate this all the way around. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna tempt Lady Luck like that. Just in case, just in case it breaks. And that's the last thing I would want is for one of these things to break on camera. See now I've jinxed myself by saying that. Legs hinge forward and back. Um, they don't split out necessarily. It's actually just straight swivel. They've sort of kind of cut in the leg a little bit to allow for the fact that the legs are going to move forward a little bit. You sort of see where that halved off, flattened off section of the leg lends itself to the fact that then the leg can move a little bit forward. Unfortunately, though, let me just bring the leg a little bit forward. As you could probably guess it, there's no, there's not enough real flat footing happening here where even if you angle the feet bring one foot forward one foot back and be on your way out the door there's just not enough flat footing here to allow the figure to stand properly even though he does have in theory posability in theory everything is in theory realistically he just suits better being completely flat okay moving on to corpse boy a much smaller figure using a lot less plastic. Looking at this guy, I was actually surprised that he had posability where he does. A little bit of more of that in a second. Um, for his coloring, it's not quite the same shade of blue, almost it kind of gets a little bit more green, a little bit more dead of a blue, if, if you will. Kind of added some additional gray dry brushing adding on top there. Um, you can see that his eyes are stitched shut. That can't be good. And he does have an open mouth, which if you can see it, it goes a little bit further back and almost looks like the indication there of a tongue. Sculpted in teeth there as well. Get their share of white paint. And there's even a little bit of the gums showing in there as well, painted in pink. Just a small detail that I appreciate for the fact that they would have included. Now, he does have these little rips in his shirt. I would have to go back and watch the movie again, because underneath the rips are green. I th would think it would be the same color as his skin, but I would have to go back and watch the film again, which, unfortunately, at the time of this video and the previous videos, I hadn't had a chance to watch it for this year. Sort of one of those unfortunate afterthought films that as Christmas came very quickly in and out, as quickly out the door, I didn't get a chance to watch all the Christmas movies that I normally watch, Nightmare Before Christmas being one of them. Speaking a little bit about that posability, let's talk a little bit about that posability, yells someone at the back of the audience. Well, talking a little bit more about it, if you look at the bottom of his legs, you can sort of see that there's a secondary piece that's been added here. These legs aren't the same piece as the bottom half of his body. Sort of the giveaway is the fact that this is a little slightly more shinier, while the rest of the regular lower half of his body is more of a matte black. Well, the reason for that is for the fact that these legs are posable. I wasn't expecting these to be posable one bit, and yet they've still managed to put posability in there. I'm guessing it is a ball joint that's probably connected in there, and it's just sort of rocking in and out. Again, you can't quite really have them in a walking pose. Walking pose ultimately just causes the figure to topple over. But I appreciate for the fact that they would have actually added that as something that could be posable for the figure. Now, speaking of posability, now this is kind of where he's a little limited. I mean, really, Behemoth was limited as well. 
His head rotates all the way around, a much actually easier means to rotate him around than the larger behemoth. His arms also rotate back and forth, and technically you can move them out, much freer also than his larger counterpart behemoth. Doesn't have anything in the way of the waist, and then as we've already discussed, his little pudgy knees and short legs can be moved forward and back by something, again, I really wasn't expecting to see on a figure this real small. At the very least, I would have thought head. Second to that, I certainly would have thought arms. But to put posability in the legs, even though you really can't use them, I appreciate the fact that Diamond Select would do that. Overall, decent looking figures. I can't see these are figures necessarily that somebody's going to source out specifically. I mean, I guess you're, unless you're somebody that really likes Behemoth and Corpse Boy, can you imagine there's probably somebody out there in the world that if you walked into their room of their collectibles, it would be as far as the eye can see, or certainly from the floor to the ceiling, nothing but Behemoth and Corpse Boy collectibles. To that individual, this person would probably source out specifically these characters above all all the other ones that were released by Diamond Select. Most people probably, these are characters, I think, if anything, that are filled out characters. You sort of start with the idea, okay, I really like Nightmare Before Christmas. You pick up the, char the core characters, and then you sort of expand out from that. Diamond Select are also doing that as well. They've released Jack, they've released Sally, they've released the Mayor, and then, of course, from there, Oogie Boogie, they've expanded out from there. And these are sort of like the side expansion characters. Characters that I can't really imagine you would pick up specifically, except for that person. You know that person? Floor-to-ceiling behemoth and corpse boy collectibles. Other than that, this is sort of a great fill-in set that you've already got all the characters that you want, and as Diamond Select continue to release them, you can fill more and more out the citizens of Halloween Town. To any company that would say, well, we have to scale down our figures, we have to use a whole lot less plastic because the price of plastic is so expensive nowadays, my real argument is Diamond Select. Diamond Select continues to churn out figures, small or large, they make it happen. They don't necessarily always air the fact that plastic is expensive. They just produce the figures, the figures that collectors would want to get, and that's why I love them so much. For every small figure that we get, for example, like a Zero, or say some of the smaller Spider-Man Marvel Select figures, we get big figures as well. The likes of, say, a Juggernaut. And if you, anyone has picked up a Marvel Select Juggernaut, you know the amount of plastic that was put into that. And yet, let me also remind you, Figures like that, for example, still manage to fall within a $34.99 price point at really the price point that I'm listing here in Canada. $34.99, and they still make it happen. The reasoning why I say that as well is because while we did get smaller figures, say the likes of Pajama Jack and Zero, we still managed to get big, hefty, bulky figures like Behemoth and Corpse Boy. The price point on these are the same price as, say, a Zero. Which, again, could be debated for the fact that Zero, if you're not really using the diorama piece, I know, I know, I already said that in the other review. Here, though, at the very least, Diamond Select rewards the collectors out there for every small figure that you may be picking up in your collection, thinking that it could have been a little bit less expensive, maybe a little bit more of an affordable price because they're using a lot less material for it. They then give you another figure from the same wave that makes up for it with much more plastic, much bulkier, much more substantial I love me some substantial figures, and Behemoth is of certainly classed under a substantial figure. Corpse Boy is a little bit smaller, but he comes included with him, and as they were in the movie, we can't really have one without the other. My only real small, very small nitpick is the fact that the packaging, the gift, doesn't seem like something it can be opened. They sort of look like it teases you for the fact that there's a seam at the top, yet I can't seem to get the lid off, and that's about the only place where I think a scary teddy, like also that's included in this set, could have also been housed. Unfortunately, it just sort of drapes. It just has no place, it has no belonging, and that makes me sad to say that. Every toy should have a belonging, every accessory should have a place, and Scary Teddy is a great accessory, there's just really no place where you can put it. Potentially, there's always the avenue that Diamond Select, as they continue to expand the waves of Nightmare Before Christmas, maybe we may very well get some of the kids down the road that are the recipients of some of these scary gifts. And maybe then I'll have a place to finally put Scary Teddy. 
In the meantime, if you guys are looking to find a place in your collection for these, rest assured, some good news for you. You can currently find them at your local comic book store. I say again, the price point here in Canada is $34.99 because some people have said, well, how much are these? Specifically here in Canada, $34.99. In the U.S., it would be a little bit less, and I think overseas, it's a little bit more. What is the going price? What is the going rate, as I bang the camera here, what is the going rate of what you currently find these figures for in your cities? Let me know down below. I always like to hear more about where you guys live, the sort of the price point and what you're finding your figures for, and all that good stuff. Also, let me know if you're new to this channel. I'd like to say hello to new subscribers. By the way, speaking of subscribing, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will also be coming to soon to this channel. So keep your eyes peeled. I hate saying that and yet I ultimately, ultimately always end up saying it. Anyways, keep your eyes peeled because certainly more videos are going to be coming to this channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.